Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Today, inshallah, we're going to solve Cambridge exam, February, March 2022, paper 62. Let's start it. Question 1. Calcium carbonate reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid. The products of the reaction are aqueous calcium chloride, water, and carbon dioxide, as we can see here from the equation. A student investigated the rate of reaction between calcium carbonate and dilute hydrochloric acid using the apparatus shown. As we can see, we have a balance. A flask contains calcium carbonate and the dilute hydrochloric acid, and this flask is closed with a loose cotton wool. The mass of the flask and contents was recorded every 30 seconds, and when the reaction stopped, there were still small bases of calcium carbonate in the flask, so we have calcium carbonate in excess left behind in the flask after the reaction has been finished. State what happened to the reading of the balance as the reaction takes place and explain your answer. The reading on the balance decrease as the reaction takes place. That's why, because carbon dioxide gas given off and escape from the flask through the loose cotton wool. And escaping carbon dioxide cause the decrease in mass. There is a piece of cotton wool in the neck of the flask. Suggest why a bung is not used in the neck of the flask. A bung will completely close the flask and that's why it will not allow the carbon dioxide gas to escape. Suggest why the cotton wool is placed in the neck of the flask rather than leaving the flask open. We want carbon dioxide gas to escape. Can we leave the flask open? No. We, we will place the cotton wool to prevent the splash of the acid and loss of the acid. Actually, the cotton wool has two functions. Number one, to prevent the splash of the acid and loss of the acid. Number two is to allow carbon dioxide gas to escape. State which reactant is in excess. We have calcium carbonate, as we mentioned here. Calcium carbonate left behind as a small pieces in the flask after the reaction has finished. So calcium carbonate is in excess. Describe how the crystals of calcium chloride can be obtained from the mixture left in the flask after the reaction has stopped. After the reaction has stopped, we have calcium chloride, water in the flask, and still some small pieces remain of calcium carbonate. So the first step is to filter to rem remove the excess calcium carbonate. Of course, calcium chlor chloride is a soluble salt, so we will filter to remove the solid, which is excess calcium carbonate, and calcium chloride, because it's soluble, it will be in the filtrate. Then, place the filtrate in an evaporating dish, heat till crystallization point, then leave it to cool, allow the crystal to form, filter out the crystals, and dry it between two filter papers. Question 2. Student investigating the temperature change when an anhydrous lithium chloride dissolved in water. The student did six experiments. Experiment 1. Using a measuring cylinder. 30 cm cube of distilled water was poured into a 100 cm beaker and the initial temperature is recorded using a thermometer. Then we place 1 gram of lithium chloride added in the water and the timer was started. The water and the lithium chloride mixture was continually stirred using thermometer. The temperature of the mixture was measured every 30 seconds. The beaker rinsed with water to do the next experiment. In experiment 2, we will just change the mass of the anhydrous lithium chloride to be 1.5 gram instead of 1. Then in experiment 3, the mass will be 2 grams. Experiment 4, we will use 2.5 grams. Then in experiment 5, we will use 3 grams. Finally, in experiment 6, we will use 4 grams of the anhydrous lithium chloride. Here, we will use the thermometer diagram to complete the table and can calculate the temperature change. In the first experiment, the reading, the initial temperature was 21, the final temperature 25.5, so the difference or the temperature change is 4.5. Second experiment, the initial temperature 21, the final temperature 27.5, so the temperature change is 6.5. Then experiment 3, initial temperature is 21 final is 30 and the change is 9. Experiment 4, initial temperature 21.5, 20, uh, the final temperature is 32.5 and the change is 11. Experiment 5, 
21.5 the final temperature is 34 and the change is 12.5 experiment 6 the initial temperature 21.5 the final temperature is 39.5 and the temperature change is 18 make sure to read the temperature from the thermometer diagram correctly because this will affect your graph here complete complete a suitable scale on the y-axis and plot the result from experiment 1 to experiment 6 on the grid first we will choose a suitable scale on the y-axis then we will draw a straight line of best fit through your points the straight line must pass through the origin 0 0 point here I choose the scale for the y-axis multiples of 5 0 5 10 15 and 20 then I plot the results the mass of the anhydrous lithium chloride on the x-axis and the temperature change on the y-axis then we choose the line of best fit that pass through the points from your graph deduce the temperature change when 3.2 grams of the anhydrous lithium chloride is dissolved in 30 centimeter cube of distilled water show clearly on the grid how you worked out your answer so you have to draw on the grid First, search for the points 3.2 grams of lithium chloride, then go upward until meet the curve, and then search the point on the y-axis, it will be 14 degrees Celsius, and you have to show this work on the grid. Estimate the temperature change of the experiment 6 repeated using 60 cm cube of water instead of 30 cm cube give a reason to your answer the temperature change will be halved it will be 9 degrees celsius here you have to estimate so you have to give reading 9 degrees celsius is half the reading of the experiment 6 which was 18 so the reading will be halved the temperature change will be halved it will be 9 degrees celsius because we use double the volume of water which of course will consume more heat suggest two changes that could be made to the apparatus to improve the accuracy of the results for each change explain why it will improve the accuracy of the result first change we can use a pirouette instead the measuring instead of the measuring cylinder to measure the 30 centimeter cube of water because the pirouette is more accurate in measuring volume than the measuring cylinder step number two change number two we can use a polystyrene cup instead of the beaker because polystyrene is an in insulator so it will decrease the heat loss question 3 solution A and solid B were analyzed solution A was aqueous copper bromide tests were done on each substance and complete the expected observation first we will do tests for solution A solution A was divided into three approximately equal portion in three test tubes the first test the end of a piece of a wire was dipped into the first portion of solution A and the end of the wire was then blazed at the edge of roaring Bunsen burner flame. This is the flame test. Dip the wire into the solution then put it into the flame. Here we are testing copper ions so the flame color will be the blue green color. Second test. To the second portion of solution A aqueous ammonia was added drop wise until in excess. Ammonia will react with copper bromide to produce copper hydroxide. So our observation will be a blue precipitate is formed. The precipitate will dissolve in excess ammonia to give deep blue solution. Take care, this question is for three marks. So you have to cover three points. Number one, a blue precipitate is formed. Second, the, the precipitate will dissolve in excess ammonia. And the third point is it will dissolve to give deep blue solution. To the third portion of solution A, add about 1 cm cube of the nitric acid followed by a few drops of aqueous silver nitrate. Silver nitrate is used to test for halide ions and here we have bromide ions in solution A. It will react with silver nitrate to form silver bromide which is a creamy precipitate. So the observation will be creamy precipitate. Then test on solid B. Solid B was added to 15 cm cube of water in a boiling tube. A bung was placed in the boiling tube. 
then it was shaken to dissolve. So solid B dissolved in distilled water to form solution B. Then solution B was divided into three approximately equal portion in three test tubes. The first test. The first portion of solution B was tested using universal indicator and the color of the universal indicator paper turns blue. That means this solution is alkali because it gives a blue color with the universal indicator. The second test, the second portion of solution B, we will add aqueous sodium hydroxide, dropwise, then an excess. A white precipitate formed, which remain when excess aqueous sodium hydroxide was added. So a white precipitate is formed, which will not dissolve in excess sodium hydroxide. This result is specific for calcium ions, because aluminium and zinc also give white precipitate, but they are amphoteric, so they will dissolve in excess. But the calcium hydroxide precipitate will not dissolve in excess sodium hydroxide. So this, re uh, this observation is characteristic for calcium ions. Test three, to the third portion of solution B, aqueous ammonia was added dropwise and then in excess. The solution remains colorless, so no precipitate is formed, and this is also a characteristic result for calcium ions. Did use the pH of solution B. As we can see here, solution B turns the universal indicator paper into blue, so it's an alkali, alkali of a metal from group 2, so we can deduce the pH is about 12. Identify solid B. Solid B dissolve in water to give calcium hydroxide, which is the alkali here formed in the test one. So solid A, solid B was calcium oxide. Then question four. The experiment. Fizzy drinks contain carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide gas dissolved in the liquid in the fizzy drinks. The carbon dioxide gas can be removed from the fizzy drinks by heating. Plan an investigation to find the volume of carbon dioxide gas present in one decimeter cube of the fizzy drink. Include in your answer how you will calculate the volume of carbon dioxide that is dissolved in one decimeter cube of the fizzy drink. You are provided with a small sample, less than one decimeter uh, of the fizzy drink and the common laboratory apparatus. Here, reminder that one decimeter cube is one thousand centimeter cube. So first, the first step is to measure the volume of the sample given. We will measure the volume of the sample using measuring cylinder. Then we will pour this sample into a conical flask. Immediately cover the conical flask with a bung, which has a delivery tube connected to the gas syringe. This step has to be done immediately to prevent the escape of the gas from the solution. Then after closing the flask connected to a gas syringe, we will heat the flask using a Bunsen burner until no more gas is given off. We can see that by a constant reading on the gas syringe. Then record the volume of the gas in the syringe and use yield calculation to convert the volume of the sample first measured by the measuring cylinder from centimeter cube to decimeter cube by dividing it by thousand. Then the final step is the calculation, how to calculate the volume of carbon dioxide gas in one decimeter cube of the sample. This will be equal to the volume of carbon dioxide gas in the sample, which is collected here in this uh, syringe, divided by the volume of the sample in decimeter cube, which we calculated here in this step, converted from centimeter cube to decimeter cube. This will give us the volume of carbon dioxide gas in one decimeter cube of the here we come to the end of our exam. Comment down below if you have any questions. Like the video and subscribe to the channel to receive all the updates. Thank you for watching. Wish you all best of luck.